Hi guys, welcome back to Butterfly Garden 23.0. Sorry my hair's a little crazy. Um, we're just getting over COVID and everything here. We didn't have it, but I mean, everything's been shut down, so I haven't been able to get a haircut in a while. So, butterfly gardening. If you guys are thinking about starting a butterfly in your area, um, just make sure you have lots of really good nectar plants, but you also wanna make sure you have some really, really good um, host plants. And it depends on what type of butterflies are in your area and what type of host plants you need to get. So I'm gonna show you a couple here. We're in South Florida. So these are the ones that I use for South Florida. I am gonna get a couple more, but let me just show you what I have and what we use. So as far as nectar plants, we use the pentas, which are amazing. The butterflies love the pentas. We also use the lantana, which has been growing like crazy. These things get really big. So I have lantana or I'm sorry, not lantana. I do have lantana, but this is the porter weed, which has been going like crazy. I have the red down here, the blue, the lantana is over here, which is doing very well too, very colorful. And I have a couple more pentas here. I have some white pentas over here, some butterfly bush. Oh my God, not butterfly bush, I'm sorry. Um, this is, fire bush um the butterfly bush is over here so that's the butterfly bush there this is fire spike over here so that's my fire spike i'm not sure what the name of this is i actually just got this tree it's been doing very well and flowering a lot They've been all over this too. I just can't think of the name right now. If anybody knows, just um, leave a comment in, down below or I'll try and figure it out and I'll let you guys know. But that one also. So that's as far as the nectar. That's gonna provide the food source for the adult butterflies. As far as the babies, so we have a couple things here. Um, let me go over this one first because it's the big one. So the monarchs. The monarchs love, love, love the milkweed. So the most readily available one at all Lowe's, Home Depot, all of that is always gonna be the tropical milkweed. Very easy to get, um, makes very nice flowers. The only thing with this is we're in South Florida, so this does not die back every year. So usually around October, November time, um, when they start to migrate away from the area, I'll actually cut these down to about six inches off the ground um, and let it grow new to help fight that disease. Um, and so the monarchs aren't staying around and they always do try to migrate down to Mexico because I don't want them hanging out and eating my milkweed because they will get that disease. So lots and lots of the milkweed there. I put in a few spots. So I also have some milkweed over here just to help kind of get them all over the garden. Some more milkweed there. They'll find it, don't worry. They'll, they always find it. Um, my box over here is always full. Right now, they just ate this to the ground not too long ago and I cut it all back. But that box there is usually all full of milkweed as well. And then because they've been doing such a good job of eating that and I've been buying so much of the regular milkweed, I actually started planting my own too so I can grow it myself. Um, but the giant milkweed, if you don't know what that is, um, it's another type of milkweed with giant leaves here. And it lasts much, much longer because they still eat it pretty good, but it'll last much, much longer. A couple caterpillars, it'll take them a long time to eat through this stuff. So I got a couple of those and these grow very tall. They grow about eight feet tall, eight to 10 feet tall if you let them. So another good option for the milkweed. So that's gonna be for the Monarch caterpillar. And also um, we actually just registered our garden with monarchwatch.org. So we're a registered Monarch uh, way station. So that is pretty cool. And I'll provide updated videos on that later because I actually just got a tagging system that I'm going to start tagging our monarchs too. So that takes care of the monarchs. So as far as the zebra butterflies here in South Florida, as well as the gulf, we have the passion vine here, which is also called the maypop. This is the non-fruit bearing type, um, but the zebras all day long are all over this, the zebras and the gulf. Um, let me bring you to my, I actually have two. Let me bring you to the other one because I think there's some eggs on the other one. So again, for the monarchs, we have the milkweed, the zebras and the gulf. We have the passion vine. So let's see if we can get a good shot of that. 
Sorry guys, I'm on my iPhone today and for some reason, maybe you guys know, you can let me know in the comments below, but it doesn't let me switch my camera view, which is driving me crazy. So if you guys know a way of switching my camera while I'm doing a video, please let me know because I can't figure that out. I don't know if they don't allow that feature or not. So yeah, so Zebra and Golf are on the Passion. If we come over here, we have our... Um, the partridge pea. And the partridge pea is for the yellow sulfur, and they're usually all over this. And those butterflies, um, they're crazy. They fly very, very fast. I don't even know how they see where they're going. They're very, very fast flying butterflies. They don't tend to stick around the garden too quick. Um, unless they're laying eggs, they will. They'll spend their time on here laying eggs, but if they're just flying around. They're very, very fast butterflies. So we got the partridge pea for the yellow sulfur. We got the, um, passion vine for the zebra and the gulf and then of course the uh, milkweed and then down here so we have parsley which is also supposed to be the host plant for the giant and the um the giant and the eastern swallowtail the eastern black swallowtail which is also the rue the rue is also for the giant and the black swallowtail but they always 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 seem to prefer my rue and we just had about 15 or 20 and let me see if I can show you it because I kind of have to look at the camera at the same time. So down here, I don't know if you can see, they look like twigs in there. But those are the chrysalis for the giant swallowtails. But they love the rue. And rue is very inexpensive. So if you want a good inexpensive host plant, just go out and get yourself, get yourself some rue. And you'll get plenty of um, giant swallowtails. They like the rue. They like citrus. Um, but those butterflies are huge. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think they are the biggest in the United States, the giant swallowtail, and they're just, they're very graceful, slow flyers, and they're amazing to watch. My wife saw one the other day, she thought it was a bat for a minute, because it was so big. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I do have some crepe myrtle in here, too. The bees like that, but not so much as a butterfly plant. Um, it, we, this area gets mostly shade, so I have some impatience in there. That's a little gardenia bush down here. Smell is amazing, but again, not too much for the butterflies. Um, hydrangeas, we have some hydrangeas back there. This is another type. It's a black diamond series of the crepe myrtle. Um, very nice blooms. Again, more for the bees than the butterflies, but just a very pretty plant. Some Mexican heather. The butterflies come in the Mexican heather every once in a while, but the bees. The bees are always in my Mexican heather here. They love it. I got some grapes that I just planted, so that's going to be a while for my grapes. And then we got this, which is sweet almond, which also smells amazing. I don't have any... I got some little blooms coming. Again, sorry about the camera angles because I can't flip my camera around. But that's it. So just some um, host plants. Find out what butterflies are native to your area, get the host plants for them, get some nice um, nectar plants in there as well. Um, just a quick overview of everything so you can see behind me. But again, any comments or anything, we've been doing it a while now. Lots of trial and error, so we have learned quite a bit doing this. We're always learning though, every day. Um, got some nice honeysuckle, it's not flowering right now, but that's very nice when it's flowering too. And the butterflies do like the honeysuckle. But again, like I said, we did a lot of trial and error, so if you need any help or have any questions or comments or feedback, just let me know. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.